let's talk a little bit about uh, furniture. Um, the you know big question is 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 all of our stuff going to fit on the moving truck or the pods or whatever we're going to be taking? How many pods do we need? How big of a truck do we need? That always seems to uh, you know be everybody's big question. And then the answer is I go into the various Facebook groups. They say purge, purge, purge. Get rid of everything. Only you know unless it's a family heirloom, don't take it to Florida. And I'm I'm kind of having difficulty believing that because if I take the furniture that I have here in New York and I sell it for pennies on the dollar and then I have to go to Florida and buy the furniture that I, I think I could probably fit it in a moving truck cheaper but I don't know I've never done this before and I'm just going off of what other people are, are saying and questioning it so let's figure this out. Let's find out. Is it really cheaper to sell it off and then buy it when you get down there? Because there is certainly a cost to move it to Florida. Now, if, uh, let's say a pod uh, is going to cost $3,000 to move it to Florida and store it for a period of time, well, that's $3,000 worth of furniture I could stuff in there and not have to buy when I get to Florida. So I don't know. Um, one of the things I'm not sure about is what is going to be the cost of the furniture in Florida because I've heard you can pick up some used furniture. You can also pick up furniture from when they go and they stage houses. Um, and I've heard you can get that pretty cheap. Um, there's also some good new furniture stores so when we go to Florida in a couple of weeks, we're going to check out some furniture places. We're going to go over the list of furniture we're interested in seeing, possibly purchasing at some point, and find out how much it's going to cost. So do we want to take, for example, our bedroom dresser down? What's it going to cost to move that bedroom dresser down versus just buying one when we get there? Well, one thing that uh, we have to do is understand what furniture are we talking about so we went through did a household inventory of all of our furniture and came up with uh, 163 pieces of furniture everything from a bookshelf to a dresser to a table to a chair you name it 163 uh, we went through that list um, and we know that there's 63 pieces of furniture we do not want to take with us for sure they, it is not going on a truck it's not going with us so that brings that leaves us with 100 pieces of furniture that we've got to decide do we take it to florida or leave it in new york now i'm of the opinion that some things are going to be fairly easy to move take this dresser or the, i'm sorry these shelves for example behind me these are just simple wayfair dresser uh, shelves right it came in a thin box it was just a bunch of flat boards and you screw them together so why can't i unscrew it turn it back into a flat box and take it with us and then when i get there i'll reassemble it into what it is that flat box isn't going to take up very much room in a moving truck and we have a lot of shelves like this all throughout the house in fact almost all of our shelves are that Wayfair style. So I think, you know, any furniture that I can disassemble and flatten it down so it's not going to take up much room, why not take it? Um, so another thing that I did was I had the boys go around and measure all the furniture, right? Width and um, depth. And then afterwards, I was thinking I probably should have had them do height. Then I could have got a cubic foot and figured out the total cubic foot of the furniture that we want to take. But I wasn't thinking about that at the, at the time. What I was thinking about was, let's take the furniture that we aren't so sure about. That 100 pieces of furniture that we think we might want to take with us. And let's see where that furniture might fit in the new house. So along those lines, 
and this is probably going to be difficult to see on camera. But let me uh, let me see if I can find a good one. Yeah, okay, fine. This one. There we go. So this is a piece of graph paper with a drawing of the new house on it, and each square in this one equals two feet. That graph paper. Um, that's with blown up kitchen. Just the kitchen. We got them for the, each bedroom has one. So uh, there, there's one of the bedrooms. And this bedroom, every square is six inches. Yep, six inches. And so what we'll be able to do now is say, okay, in this, and this is laminated, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can buy, you can get a computer program where you can put your house in there and then drop furniture around. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, you can just use graph paper and then cut your furniture out. So you got a couch, you do, you figure out how big the couch is in graph paper, you cut it out, and then you can take the couch and just move it around the room, figure out where you want that to be, um, and then maybe tape it on if you wanted to. Or what this is, these are laminated, and uh, I'll be able to take a dry erase marker and say, hey, let's put the couch here. No, I don't like it. Erase it. Let's put it over here. Be able to try a bunch of different things. So we'll be able to take the furniture that we think will fit in the new house and see if it really does through experimentation and just trying it out and seeing how it goes. Um, so that's kind of what we've been working on this week. Getting our list of furniture narrowed down, trying to, to see if it's going to work well in the new house. And then that's going to help us put together a list of what kind of furniture we want to see when we go furniture shopping, what kinds of things we want to look for. And then ultimately the list, you know, I have the boys, they're going to love me for this, go back through and remeasure the height of everything. Um, and so ultimately I'll be able to tell the square, the uh, cubic feet needed, um, for the moving truck or the pods for what furniture we decided we want to take. Um, now the cubic foot method, it's not going to be perfect because it all depends upon how you stack things and, you know, and it's, you know, everything isn't perfect because the pods only so big and, but it gives us a pretty good idea. I mean, if, are we half off? Are we 10% off? Are we pretty close to it? Um, so it'll, it'll give us some kind of an idea of how much space we need to take the furniture that we're thinking about taking. And from that, we'll be able to calculate what the cost is to take the, this furniture. And given what the shopping that we're doing in Florida, we'll be able to figure out if it's uh, worth it financially to take our existing furniture or not. You know, some people say, well, just get rid of it all. You're going to want a fresh start. You're going to want new furniture. The furniture that you have isn't going to match the Florida house. Yada, 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 whatever. Um, you know, I'm maybe I'm a tightwad. <laughs> I, I don't get really hung up on furniture, okay? Um, if it's functional, <laughs> that's all I really need it for. Um, I don't, this shelf back here is white. I could care less if it was green, if it was blue. Can I put my stuff on it? Yeah. Does it hold it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I don't care that it's white. Um, and therefore, I don't care what color my shelves are going to be when I get to Florida. Is white going to be a good color for Florida? I don't know and I don't care. Right? So that's that's just my attitude. Everybody's a little bit different. Some people really care about those things. They're, they're going to want... Uh, you know, I can see it that in the Northeast you want a you want a dark woodsy look, like you're in a cabin out in the woods. But when you get to Florida, you want a beachy kind of bright sunny look, right? So you don't want that a lot of those dark woods. But I've seen a lot of houses out there uh, as we go through the real estate sites, and they've got dark wood furniture in there, and it looks fine. It's cool. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just do it. I'm not as sensitive to it as others. Um, so I don't care. I, I'll, I'll bring my furniture from the Northeast and put it in a Florida house if it means, uh, you know, saving thousands upon thousands of dollars. That's fine with me. No problem there. 
Okay, so that's today's update. Um, if you're planning uh, to, to make a move, possibly to Florida someday, and uh, you're wondering where to start and what kinds of activities to do, I think this is a great activity. Just to uh, do an inventory of all your furniture and start thinking about where you might put that furniture in your new house. You might be surprised. You might be thinking, uh, yeah, that dresser is going to look really good in a certain location. And then you put it on your uh, on your room map here, and it just doesn't fit. Oh, one other thing I was going to mention is when you do this, pay attention to walk areas. How much space do you need between the end of your bed and your dresser? Right. So if, if you put it in there and you find you only have a foot between the end of the bed and the dresser, is that going to be enough? Probably not. Because to get through there, you're going to have to turn sideways and kind of shuffle along the end of the bed. Um, so uh, take a ruler, measure some of your the walkways in your house now, the walkways that you feel really comfortable with. Um, and if you've got walkways that you feel are kind of tight, measure those so that when you're laying out your furniture, you're leaving ample enough space to be able to walk around your furniture and uh, it's not all that crowded. Okay, so I hope this helps if you, if uh, you're with your planning, and uh, thank you for for tuning in.